What's up? It's me again. This time we are going to be talking about colours, specifically the types of colours that I pick and how I pick them. Um, one thing that was said about my last video was that I they wish um, people wish that I had gone over how I pick colours and maybe gone over some of the terminology. Um, so that's what I'm going to be addressing in this video using a few examples just like the other times. Um, yeah, so let's get to it. I've got this um, quick sketch prepared for this and I just coloured it according to my preferences I suppose. Now keep in mind I am not academically trained at all so a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is just the feeling of a piece, like the feelings that a the colours give off according to you know their connotations and how they're used with each other and a lot of that is personal interpretation and um, most of it is just the colours that I like and how I associate them to different scenarios or feelings or whatever so I'm not going to be using too much lingo because I don't know any of it <laughs> um, so yeah, so this piece, the thought process, well, I mentioned it in the last video, but I didn't go over it too much, but I use a lot of purple, and the way, so if I go over the shadows, um, everything is on the purple, bluish side of the spectrum, and Anyone who's familiar with my work will know that I often use purple and blues as a sort of cold colour to balance out the warmer tones. And part of that is personal preference and the other part is that it does function very well as a cool colour and one a little bit more inspired than just, you know, straight blue by itself. Um, and um, now what do I mean by warm and cool colours is, well for one it's mostly contextual. The colour will only appear cool or warm um, when in a context with other colours. And how that colour will appear to you depends on the colour being used and the colour it is being used with. If I were to take Grey, for example. Grey isn't a colour, it's a shade, but whatever. It's an example. So this is... This is pretty obviously a warm colour. We know that because we associate it with warmth, summer, sun, that sort of jazz. Um, if you apply a grey to it, that grey is cold. If I were to do the reverse, with blue and apply the exact same shade of grey to it, that grey becomes warm. It's the exact same shade of grey being used, um, but it changes depending on its context. And it's something that, it's why colour theory is something that requires a lot of experimentation to get right, because obviously you have to experiment and see what kinds of colours go together, how different colours influence the other, and all that sort of stuff. It's um, It sounds more complicated than it actually is, all you need to do is experiment and have fun. You also don't really need to be overthinking anything. Now I will quickly go over some other pieces I've done and just talk about, you know, the kinds of choices I'm making and why I'm making them and maybe hopefully properly explain why I'm using the colours I am and what they connote. Um, so here we have fan art of Pokemon and the surrounding area is quite, well it's quite dark, all the values are pretty dark in comparison with the light source and the light source is only hitting a few pieces of the canvas and our main subject here, uh, Grookey. If I turn down the saturation so you can see that. 
it's very it's actually quite a very quite a dark piece in terms of its values the light is really only hitting the canvas very sparsely but even with that in consideration it's still quite a bright piece part of that is the colors i've used there's quite a lot of colors kind of being thrown around and the light is very warm it's on the yellow side of the spectrum it's green barely but it's closer to the yellow than it is to the green if i were to put green here then it becomes colder and while that green isn't necessarily a bad choice in the context of what i'm trying to say well not trying to say but what i'm trying to convey with the scene it wouldn't quite work as well as something that's more on the yellow side of the spectrum because the yellow again we associate yellow orange those kinds of colors with um warmth and um, sun light whatever um and even though the values are very dark you've still got those flashes of yellow everywhere and you've got the, like a very prominent light source here in the center that is hitting the leaves and stuff and you've also got them again you've got the purple and the blues kind of acting as a, as a balance because if we made these sort of i don't know shifted it to the red side of the spectrum and maybe saturated a little bit more you wouldn't have that same balance it would well this would not be the same piece at all really you get complete you get completely different vibe from this piece if it the shadows were red i mean this is kind of it's kind of shitty but you can tell that the vibe is already very different, even with this shitty overpaint. And it is a very deliberate choice of colors. You've got like little outlines that are slightly earthy. And some of the shadows are a little bit more saturated to give it a little bit of pop. But for the most part, you've got a lot of blue, purple, and sort of grayish desaturated shadows to act as a balancing act to the warmer tones and and it makes this piece appear more you know more happy it's not you know it's not a negative piece at all and you can tell that partly because of the you know the, the framing the way of you know, the way he's emoting but also the colors I've used. If I go to something like this, which actually doesn't have an absurd amount of purple and blue everywhere, um, you'll see that the, well, it's very obvious already that the vibe is completely different. The scene is already like very, very. It's, it's in stark contrast to the other one, and it's obviously meant to be seen as more negative. And, Besides, you know, the expression and the, the framing, the uh, fish island sort of perspective, the colour is what's selling that emotion the most, I think. Um, partly because I'm using very, like, murky, desaturated shadows, and I'm contrasting it with, like, very, like, saturated, almost unnatural colours. Um, and if you go over each of these colours, they're all closer to like blue is closer to the green side of the spectrum to bring it a bit closer to the yellow to the yellow light and um the white stripes aren't actually white but they're actually kind of like a beige kind of color same for the yellow and etc the background and all that and the shadows are all kind of like very saturated murky colors to try and give off that feeling of you know ugh. This is not something that's, you know, pleasant to be looking at. And to further contrast with that, you've got like really saturated, um, like blood. And even here it's like 
basically pink and it's using those unnatural colors to sort of communicate the idea that this isn't you know a pleasant situation and it's giving across those feelings and trying to immerse you in it by exaggerating color if that makes sense here we've got another you know obviously negative scene and you can already tell that because of the colors the sky is like a really like weirdly pink red kind of like the blood in the other picture and again I'm using those purples like not only are they unnatural along with that red but they're also balancing the very oppressive reds that I'm using and as you get to the middle of um of the frame you um it's turning more orange because you're getting closer to the light source and the values are also getting lighter as you get to the center and it's sort of leading your eye to the middle. In the corners, you've got these weird little like, textured brush marks that sort of, I don't know, they kind of remind me of like Polaroids, I suppose. I, I think that's what I was going for. I made this piece quite a while ago, um, pretty much last year, a little bit less than a year ago. Um, and yeah, it's, it's those unnatural colors everywhere that's all getting the vibe across that this is not a, this is not, you know, a happy scene. It's negative, it's oppressive, it's unpleasant. And um, the black sort of, the black obviously communicates, communicates that pretty clearly as well. Here we've got these two gays. Um, and the first thing you'll probably notice the fact that everything is blue. Everything <laughs> is blue. Even the greens are blue. Everything apart from the stuff here uh, um, out on the window, because that's where the light is coming from. And the few, you know, oh god, that's not good quality. Ooh, should've got the full, ver the full um, res version here. Anyway. Um, everything except the highlights coming from the window are basically blue. And even this one is kind of like very kind of unnatural. It's not, you know, the most pleasant skin tone to be using. And what this is communicating is pretty obviously is coldness. Um, these two people aren't in you can infer that these two people aren't in a very great situation because of the way that they've been lit. Um, the colours sort of aren't very inviting. It's not uncomfortable to look at, but the fact that it's just a wash in blues and desaturated, almost greys and stuff just tells you immediately this isn't something that's very inviting and they're not having the most fun. <laughs> this piece is, well, it's quite a difference, isn't it? This piece has very few cool colors, like very, very few. The, the shadows are all, I've kind of just completely ignored the whole balance with the blue, blouse with the cold tones, all that stuff, and just gone for like, everything is warm. Um, because this is obviously much a much more light-hearted scene. It's something, that's, you know. Yeah, that, that's, that's sort of literally just it. <laughs> it's not something that you're meant to interpret as negative, even though I mean, she doesn't look like she's having a good time. But you know, she she could be doing worse. She could be doing far worse than this. Um, and by choosing both for the lighting and the shadows warm, warmer colours, then I'm sort of connoting that this isn't something that's, that you're meant to interpret negatively, even though there's quite a bit of foul language. Hmm. Oh dear. And we've got this piece, which is um, also gay and features these two, again, 
Um, but obviously, just by the color alone, you can already tell that this is just... You can't, you, you can't interpret this in the, in the same way as the other one at all, can you? Um, not even, you know, counting, you know. Let's ignore their faces for a second. Oh, bye. Hang on, let me pick this blue so it's better. One look at you right now. Um, the colours are much more inviting, the, the light is kind of hitting them very strongly. The light's warm, and um, the, the shadows are kind of a little bit of saturated purple. And kind of like, again, that purple bluish side of the spectrum, but they're not completely desaturated and they're not covering them completely. And that sort of communicates or gives across the impression that this is something that's much more inviting. Um, and that they are not having an unpleasant time. Same goes for the stuff in the background. You've still got that blue, but it's a much more brighter blue. It's not desaturated. It's not, um, you know, it's not really there to put you off. And the flowers, um, they're very bright and colorful. And even the um, the leaves at the corners, which um, are pretty unnatural colours, and they're obviously not being lit by the same lighting that is hitting them, but it implies a certain level of surrealism in the piece that um, sort of emphasises everything else that's going on. The fact that these are kind of more naturally lit, and the light hitting on them is a bit more, you know, warm. It's much more yellow. Um, not only does it balance the piece because the colours on them are pretty normal apart from you know, the, the purples and blues. Um, but I don't know, it's very hard to explain. Really. But um, I hope I'm making sense. If I'm not, then guess I'll die. Um, but yeah, moving back this, which, I mean, to be fair, it's a very similar thought process. You've got the warm light, sort of yellow side of the spectrum, that one's pretty obviously in the red, and, um, oh, I haven't talked about this, have I? This is, oh, I mentioned it in the previous video, actually, but it's very stylized subsurface scattering, the sort of light that um, the, your skin refracts from the light going inside and coming out, sort of. If you, if my explanation doesn't make any sense, then you're probably better off looking it up because I don't know how to explain it any better than that. <laughs> I am so sorry. And literally the cars I pick are just, part of it is what I feel will suit the mood better. And there are times when those, those cars will be just very weird and very out there to sort of up the um the intensity of those emotions in the scene if it's a scene or if it's just you know whatever emotion i'm, I'm putting across the colors are, what, are what gonna, what's going to be doing most of the talking if you've got a character emoting in a certain way that's in contrast to your color and if that's not an intentional choice then the person looking at your piece will, will probably feel quite conflicted um but that also doesn't mean that you have to stick to very specific colour guidelines to use them to emote in a certain way. You can be quite weird and funky about it, which is what I try to do most of the time. And hopefully I do it okay. I think I do. That's what counts, isn't it? And um, I think that's about everything I have to say about colour. Um, now I'll probably move on to another speed paint, just to show you painting again, I guess. My last video had pretty horrific, had a pretty horrific frame rate, partly because my laptop ran out of space, um, but that won't be an issue this time. I've got that all backed up, so I'll use this as another opportunity to show you that process without it fucking up. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the end of this video, probably.
up what happened the last time I was trying to escape fate. They say it's truly rare. Soft hair was the reason that I got there. I rode the brake till it broke my best skates. I hate to make the rest wait. But the test took a lot of fortitude dealing with rude actions. I'm the worst when it comes to contact. I programmed a lot of personnel to match a format. Shift the formats, these words are important. Divorce boredom, your man's ready now, support him. Encased in the image of illusions uploading. I stay live, use logic to express the native instrumental natural processes. Audio, any oxygen left to analyze the depth of it. We're resetting it.